Today we are going to be looking at the Baku BK-15 O2 D+. This unit is a sophisticated digital DC power supply. It's uh, 15 volts, um, 2 amps I do believe. Yes. Uh, you can adjust the current on the left. You can do a set voltage here. Or you can, I think I do believe I have it set to the 0 to 15 over here. So that way I can adjust my voltage with the voltage uh, dials here. And it does have a fine tune. It does have your positive, your negative, and your ground, which grounds to, I believe, the case. If I'm not right or wrong, forget exactly where. I'd have to open it up maybe we'll take a look after and uh, you'll kind of see where that that cable goes eventually maybe who knows uh, it's got a nice little display here it's really bright uh, you know what it's small it's five inches by six inches by seven inches uh, is what you have here uh, it's a small unit it actually looks fairly nice it does uh, what it says it's gonna do but you're, well, you know what? Stay tuned and we'll get into this. So I'm gonna make a mess right here. Are you ready for it? Now I got this unit because it was really cheap and the shipping was, well, free. I think I paid 35 bucks all in for it. I thought, you know what, for the price, I can't go wrong. Uh, it's cheapest one I could find and it was shipped in Canada. So I was like, all right, let's check it out. First thing I did was I unboxed it. Unboxing these things are not that spectacular. You just pull it out of this little box and there it is. And that's it. The instructions are not in English. So don't even worry about that. You can basically figure it out basically by what's on it. So when you get your unit, you get these really crappy connector wires anyways that's garbage next thing I noticed was the power plug now this is a really cheap plug so I went to plug it into my one power bar and it just fell right out would not stay I managed to get it to stay in one of my power bars so that's what I'll be testing it with so I'll go ahead and I'll plug that guy in and it is really loose in there so it's just kind of sitting in there so it's not so this cable is gonna have to be replaced as well so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna hook these cables up here and I have the voltage set to 2.7 volts on here and I fine-tuned it so it should read 2.7 volts on my um, multimeter here and I'm doing this as a test because uh, when you have everything unhooked and everything and you want to come back, you want to make sure everything's fine-tuned. So when I go to use this again for a certain set voltage, if I step away or have something or turn the power off and disconnect the cables, I want to know that it's going to be consistent every time I go to plug it in and hook it up. So what I'm going to do is I will hook it up and both of these... I fine-tuned it already they both should read 2.7 volts and that's one thing I will give this and I'll show you in a moment here is the ability to uh, fine-tune is actually pretty good I get my ground moment of truth I'm gonna go ahead I'll just turn on and we'll get the power or the multimeter going here and so that's sitting at 2.7 volts 
and on my multimeter here it is sitting at 2.7045 uh, plugging it in and out you're gonna get a certain voltage difference and you can just take your fine tune and play with that There we go. So the fine tuning has finally put it into 2.7 volts. This fine tune is really sensitive. So even just rubbing it will change values pretty, uh, pretty good. That is that guy. Um, yeah, you just have to play with it, fine tune it. It's not bad if you're okay with doing that every time. Uh, it's not hard to get basically to the right voltage you want with that fine tuning on there. So I actually did try to test it on the oscilloscope here, just kind of see what uh, was happening. It looks really bad when I record it, so I'm not gonna do that. But I did notice uh, some people get a spike when they first turn it on. I'm seeing that spike when I power it off. So I'm getting the reverse action of what they're getting and you know what i'm not sure uh, what's going on there i don't even know what's inside this thing yet so obviously i'm gonna have to open it up i am going to have to replace this power cable so there's lots of stuff i'm sure that needs to be taken care of i know probably the connectors aren't shielded based on everyone's uh, reviews on many different models of these things they're just slapped together as quickly as possible and that's that. They save money uh, just by buying the cheapest possible cables and components to put it together. That's how they make money. When you go cheap, remember, you're going to have to calibrate. Okay, so before I go ahead and take it apart, I'll just go ahead and I'll, I will show you what it does here in the plug. Like it's... Like it, it's not even... I don't even think it catches in there. This guy taken apart. I was really hoping it wasn't going to be a lemon, but uh, from the looks of it, it's, hopefully it's not, but we'll see what we got inside here. Well, there isn't that much in there, that's for sure. I made use of... Okay, so it is fused. I'm actually surprised at that. What size fuse we got in here. So to me, this cap has a bit of a bulge in it. Yeah, so when it comes down to it, I think what I'll do is I'll replace the power cable. That should probably resolve a few of the issues here this one cap it's got a little bit of a bulge to it so it might be on its way out I'll have to see if I can find a replacement for that it's pretty bad when you just buy it and uh, you have some swelling on the cap 25s I don't think I got any 35s but uh, yeah, even on my 25 here, you can see it's uh, a little bit, uh, that's how it should look. 
but down here that's definitely not what I'm seeing I guess I'll do a follow-up video on this they probably paid the minimalist amount to get this thing manufactured So, anyways, well, yeah, I'm going to have to play around with that some more, but as is, it's usable, I wouldn't trust the power cord, I would certainly replace that if I was anyone, right away, if you get one of these cheap cords replace it right away because if it's not fitting into your your uh, outlet uh, properly and it's got play would I recommend this unit to anyone Probably not. Uh, this is probably the worst one I've ever seen. Uh, looking at uh, a bunch of the reviews online. It will work. You're going to have to find a plug that it's not going to fall out of. That it's actually going to make a good connection with. If not, get that cord replaced right away. Don't waste time. Just do it right away. So if you're actually gonna buy one of these units, I would probably suggest getting one of the three prong plugged uh, units. That way you actually have a ground. Uh, this unit, there's nothing really special about it. Uh, it does fine tune to the right voltage after playing around with it a little bit. Uh, so it all depends on what you're looking for if you're looking for something just for playing around with and you're willing to take the time to fine-tune it every time to get it where you want it then it'll work great if you're not too concerned about your voltage as well sure whatever you can use it too uh, if you're in the ballpark um, but personally I don't like that there was um, a spike in the power at the end uh, when I powered it off as well uh, hopefully I'll I'll get something that I can actually show that to you maybe in a follow-up video and what I'll do in that follow-up video is I will show you all the stuff that I've changed in here this is supposed to be a sophisticated digital DC power supply uh, it, it's really not it's no complete complete garbage uh, I wish I would have spent the 20 bucks more gotten the model up which I probably should have gone for just because it had the three prong plug and usually the higher models for some random reason have a little bit better build quality so with that being said everyone thank you for watching you have a wonderful day a wonderful week and you take care eh? see you next time